Good afternoon, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome to the third episode of our Draconic Evolution uh, tutorial series. So, this episode we're going to be covering um, some of the uh, boss aspects, like the Ender Dragon, um, getting our Dragon Heart. Um, I'll just quickly show you guys that. Also, how to resurrect the Ender Dragon, um, as well as the Chaos Dragon, Chaos Shards, um, and hopefully the Energy Storage Multi Block as well. So, um, first things first, one thing I did forget to mention last episode the Distortion Flame. It requires four Nether Stars, a Diamond, and four pieces of glass. We'll get you four of these. Basically, you can put these down um, next to any block, and you'll be able to see through the world um, through that block. And it pretty much replicates the um, effect of, like, you know, sometimes the world will glitch, and there'll be a big chunk of the land that's um, opened up, and you can see through it. And that's pretty much what this is going to do. So if we go over here to, say, this tree, um, we put it through here, you know, we can see through all the leaves that are attached to this leaf um, wood you know we can see through that and basically we'll be able you can potentially see through the ground and kind of um, see diamonds and things like that below um, basically it just replicates the effect of that graphical glitch and I wonder why those are still laying there um, however this block no matter what you do you're not going to be able to pick it back up once you set it down. The only option is to break it, even with Silk Touch. Um, next up, I did make a little Ender Portal here, so let's go ahead and jump into the end, and we'll go battle the Ender Dragon. And I did go ahead and make a set of armor and weapons and stuff that were pretty powerful with the uh, equipment upgrading um, that's added with this mod. Now, I didn't add any enchantments or anything to it, but... Uh, there we go. So let's see if we can find the Ender Dragon here. And you should, down below, you'll see some Draconium Ore and stuff um, around here. And I didn't actually set the GUI up too crazy with this at the moment. But you'll notice we can drop the Ender Dragon fairly quickly, and that was without explosive arrows or anything. So, he did drop this uh, Dragon Heart here, and if you notice, we can grab it, and that's how you get your Dragon Hearts. Now, to resurrect the Ender Dragon, however, um, and you'll notice that the Ender Dragon does drop you um, some Draconium Dust as well, so keep an eye out for that. Um... And let's just go ahead and throw that away. I don't really need it. Now to resurrect the Ender Dragon, because this mod does, since it does require so many Dragon Hearts and everything, um, with the Ender Dragon being one of the primary ways of getting Ender, I mean, uh, Dragon Hearts, um, it does include a way to resurrect the Ender Dragon. So if we scroll down here, you'll notice there is a Ritual of Draconic Resurrection. And you're just going to set up a multi-block structure like this. So let's grab... First off, you're going to want a Resurrection Stone. You're going to want some Charged Draconium. You are going to want some Quartz Pillars. You're going to want some Blocks of Diamond. Some Obsidian. And then lastly, some Glowstone. And the way you set this up is this Resurrection Stone, by the way, is fairly expensive to craft. Um, it's going to be four Wyvern Cores, Draconium Block, and then four of any Mob Soul. And you have to place this, um, I believe it's within 50 blocks of the center point of the end. Why is it not scrolling down? Why do you not scroll down? Um, let's see... Okay, it has to be within 150 blocks of zero, zero. Okay. And we'll put the Resurrection Stone down. And we don't need any more of those. Um, why does it do that sometimes? And then the Obsidian. Like 
like so. Then the glowstone. And then these. And I don't believe. Okay. I don't believe these have to be exact. But we will set them up like this. And let's bring this out. Oops. Is it? No. Right there, I think. It's kind of hard to tell because everything's like kind of lopsided here. Um, put that there and this and then this and then we'll put our diamonds here our charged draconium and then all we have to do is just come up and right click oops right nope this is wrong okay so it needs to be one block, two blocks, there's that like random sound bug, oh that's right, these, that's my bad, these need to be one higher, okay, and we'll put that on there, and then if we come over here and we right click this resurrection stone, you'll notice we're going to get a bit of a thunderstorm going on and some particle effects and everything and it's going to take a minute basically it's going to go through and it's going to resurrect all the um, crystals that are on top of um, the towers and it's going to take it just a second and we're going to see the ender dragon uh, get resurrected and he is going to have a different um, graphic this time which is kind of exciting i'm actually going to go into well, nah, not for this fight. It's pretty much the same. Now, I will say, as you fight this Ender Dragon, this resurrected one, he is going to get harder the more times you kill him. Um, <coughs> up to a certain point. So, if you're familiar with uh, Dragon's Dogma, there was that in-game um, dragon that got harder, you know, the more times it was killed. It's pretty much the same concept. The more that you kill this dragon, he's going to progressively get stronger. Um, eventually capping out at a certain point where he just can't get any stronger but uh, the first time that you fight him he's not going to be that much different than the uh, standard ender dragon so it just shot this particle effect up in the air and there he is with his alternate um, uh, graphic and everything now you will notice he's regenerating health at an extreme rate and that is due to the fact that he does get like 25 seconds of regeneration when you first summon him. So during that time, I mean, he's there's pretty much not a whole lot of reason to even bother attacking him um, when he has that. Because the regeneration is just so fast. Now if you notice, the regeneration did finally kick off. And so now uh, we can realistically damage him. But you will notice he does have a bit more health than the first time. But aside from that, he's not too much, too different. No new, real new mechanics or anything. Oops, I was trying to switch over to that. Because that Staff of Power, I have a ton of attack on it. But there we go. So he's dead. We can fly over here and get our Dragon Heart. And if we go down here, um, you'll notice he doesn't make a new portal or um, a Dragon Egg or anything. But uh, he does drop the Draconium and everything um, once again. And now we're going to look at the other boss that is added with uh, with this mod, and he is a bit of a boss. Um, I'm actually going to go into survival when we go fight him, I think. Um, so, uh, basically to find the Chaos Island, you're going to have to go to some multiplier of 10,000. So, either 0, 10,000, 0, 20,000, uh, 10,000, 0, etc. Um... So I'm going to start flying out. It is going to take a minute. Um, one thing I would suggest you do is set your flight speed modifier to 600% uh, times. 
when you go out looking for this guy. And like I said, I will uh, go into survival mode uh, when we go fight him. So I'll be back in a minute once I find a Chaos Island. And um, I also might bring you guys back if I find a comet because I haven't shown you guys one of those on camera. Okay, I wanted to bring you guys back really, really quickly because I did find a comet um, while I was on the way out. If you notice, there is quite a bit of draconium. Um, and then there's like this solid chunk at the end of it that um, tends to be a little bit denser on draconium. And you tend to find a bit in here. Um, but if you notice, it does span a decent amount. And stuff from other mods, such as the... There was one right over here. Right there. Ender Lily Seeds can spawn on this um, in stone that's here. So I just wanted to show you guys that really, really quickly. And I'm going to continue heading out towards the Ender Dragon. Or the Chaos Dragon, sorry. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, welcome back. Um, so you'll notice there's these... Like all of a sudden there's all this like spread out in stone and you'll notice it on the mini map it actually looks kind of cool on the mini map. Um, that means you are getting very very close to a chaos island. So once you start seeing that be prepared because this fight is not for the weak of heart. Um, you do want full draconic gear, you want draconic weapons, you want to pull all the stops because this is honestly the hardest fight um, in all of like modded Minecraft. So the chaos guardian has these um, chaos crystals they do have iron around them there he is by the way <laughs> um, and in order to kill him you have to destroy all of these chaos crystals before you can even begin to damage him at all and um, as you go through the fight as his HP drops he is going to start uh, occasionally resurrecting those crystals so we're gonna try this fight <laughs> Uh, one time legit, and we'll see how it goes. So let's go to game mode S, and we're going to give this a shot. Now, like I said, this fight is excessively difficult. Um, oh, one thing I should probably do before we go in there, one thing I would suggest you do is go into this with the explosive bow um, as opposed to just the standard bow. So he's shooting at us here. And those crystals, by the way, do have a health bar. So, um, they take a little bit to kill um, in comparison to um, the standard Ender Dragon crystals. So, oh wow. But you'll notice that I have an increased uh, shield. You can actually upgrade your armor um, with that. And we may just have to go in there and go ham on this thing. Okay, that one's destroyed. My bad. Oh my god. See, he almost killed me right there. Um, but actually, I'm just going to go to creative mode. Because honestly, this fight does take a really long time um, to get him usually because he is extremely powerful. I thought I was in creative mode. Was I in survival mode? <laughs> no, I was in creative mode and he still killed me. That's how strong he is. He can just kill you. He doesn't care. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Okay, I don't know what that was. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to get back there and get our stuff. And, um... Yeah. And I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. Um... Oh, shit. In creative mode. He can still kill you, by the way, even in creative. So, just a heads up. <laughs> He's like the only fight in the game that can kill you in creative mode. Um, and you'll notice he's shooting shit everywhere. So basically you're going to have to destroy all of these crystals that span uh, around here. Which is quite a bit. A lot of them of course being shielded. While he's shooting you with all that shit before you can even hurt him. And then he still has the ability to resurrect these crystals. And... Uh, 
of course, start getting healing from those. And the only real chance that you have is wearing the Draconic Armor, um, because pretty much anything else, he's going to insta-kill you. Now, when you're fighting him, keep in mind that the Draconic Armor, if you notice, I have, like, no power in this stuff. Um, that is because his attacks do drain the power of your armor excessively fast. So, I'm in creative mode. Get away. And it's in peaceful. Okay. Well, let's head on down here. Oh my god. <laughs> I cannot believe he can kill you in creative. I've never even, you know, messed with him on creative, so I did not know that. Um... Yet. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so anyway, once you do manage to kill him, if you burrow down, um, it's usually around the center of this, which should be right around in here. Uh, it's usually where, like, the obsidian is kind of dense. Yeah, right here. So you'll find this draconic core. And so basically you've got a bunch of draconic infused obsidian. And um, then you have this chaos crystal. And by the way, he does drop um, dragon hearts. He drops two instead of just the one um, normal one that the uh, uh, ender dragon drops. So, whenever you get in here, what you can do, and this is also kind of dangerous as well. Uh, fucking cool. Okay. <laughs> you can't really, you can't really steal it from him. Uh, <laughs> if you notice. Um, he is excessively hard to kill, just for the record, so be aware of that. Um... But what we can do here, let's grab our stuff, uh, we can break this Chaos Crystal. And what it's going to do is, when you do that, let me pull open, um, I believe it's right, I believe it drops seven fragments, but I want to make sure for you guys, um, or five, five Chaos Shards when you break this. Now you'll notice when we break it, um, it kind of had like a weird visual effect, and basically this island is going to explode. So we'll just hang out here because we're in creative mode. And you notice we're getting sucked in. Now if we weren't wearing draconic armor, um, we would only have a couple seconds to get out of here before we died. But since we have the draconic armor on, um, it wouldn't be too much of an issue. But if you notice, let me um, actually fly up here. Oh, fucking cool. Oh, okay, we were vaporized by high energy fusion explosion. Um, that's what happens when it builds up all that power. It is going to blow up the entire island and kill you if you're in it. Um, you know, once that happens. So, like, here's where we were, the Chaos Dragon and everything. And you'll notice that the island is completely obliterated at this point. So, just a, just a fun heads up on that. <laughs> um... But on the plus side, this stuff is totally vulnerable now. Um, so anyway, that'll give us five of those chaos shards. And if we were to look here, we can use those chaos shards, of course, to make our chaotic cores and our draconic reactor core. Um, which we'll cover um, what to use those for um, later on. So, you know, that pretty much covers the Chaos Dragon um, as best as is reasonable. He is a very hard fight. I'm actually dreading fighting him in my uh, survival series. Uh, whoops. <laughs> but anyway, I'll be back in just a second. I'm going to get some items together and everything um, for the next part of this episode. And I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, welcome back. Um, one item that I did forget to cover was this um, item dislocator and awakened item dislocator so these are fairly easy to craft um, I was actually going to cover them last episode if you recall or no the first episode um, so basically what these do you can shift right click them to activate them so for example we have that 
piece of cobblestone over there. We can shift right click this item dislocator and once we get close enough to it it's going to just absorb um, items within an eight block range. And the awakened item dislocator works the exact same way except in a 32 block range. And it does it you know pretty much instantly. It's kind of nice because it's similar to the ring of magnetization from um, Batania but it is really really easy to just toggle on and off. So definitely a nice block. I actually quite like it even over the uh, Batania version. So the next thing that I want to cover is the Draconic Evolution Energy Multi-Block. Really, really powerful energy storage. Um, basically, the top tier version of this can store, I believe it's 2.4 million, R, uh, or no, 2.4 trillion RF. Um, it's right, you can look it up right here under the energy storage multi-block and it will cover the different tiers for you. Um, but for the first tier, all you're going to need is just this, um, oops, not the energy pylon, the energy core, which is just some energy cores, wyvern core, and some draconium. And if we grab this and we set it down right here, that's pretty much, if you notice up at the top left, it says it's a tier one. Now, the other thing that you are going to need is you're going to need to get yourself um, these particle generators. And you're going to set them within like 10 blocks of the energy core. So we're going to set them just right over here. And then what we can do is we can give it a redstone signal. I believe, is that not, is that not correct, or no, it's like shift, yeah, shift right click, and it's going to activate um, the energy core, and if you notice, it has created this spherical um, thing here, and at the top left, you'll notice that it can store up to 45.5 million RF. And before we cover, um, oh, how do you shut this off? Oops, no, not that. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Um, how do you turn these off? I can't remember. Uh, once you turn them on, how do you shut them off? Um, or can you shut them off? I can't recall. Um, Glass block either above or below it, depending on whether the pylon is placed below or above the core. If you place the glass block under it. Okay, I can't remember how you shut those things off. Um, okay, maybe, I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out here in just a second. Um, anyway, to upgrade it to the next tier, you're going to need just six draconium blocks and just surround it like so. And now if we come over here and we shift right click this, we now have a tier two that can store 273 million RF. And... Is it? No. no. Hell with it. We'll just break it and replace it. That's fine. Uh, and then for the next tier, you're just going to bring this stuff out and just make a big cube for your tier two. So now if we come over here and we shift right click, uh, you'll notice that we now have a tier 3 that is capable of storing 1.64 billion RF. Um, for the... Oh, gosh. I don't remember exactly. 
uh, what the tier four is. Because it goes up to like a tier seven. <laughs> uh, the tier four... Okay. Do we... Oh, I guess we have to replace all of this with redstone. Maybe. So now we're just going to replace all of this with redstone. And basically you'll get to where your um, outer shell is um, just the draconium um, and your interior is going to be blocks of redstone um, from this point on. So whenever we upgrade it you will have to remove all your prior blocks. So after this one I'm just going to cut camera and build out the largest one um, just to show you the change and um, then we'll get uh, moving forward with how to actually use this block. So, set that up, and I believe, is there anything on the corners? Basically, whenever you're building this out, just, um, you'll just want to check this pretty religiously when you're setting it up. Um, nope, that's it. Okay. So then we can right, shift right click this, and you'll notice now we have a tier 4 that can store 9.88 billion. Uh, RF. So I'm going to cut camera for just a minute while I um, go ahead and build out the largest one and then I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, welcome back. So here is the largest one. So underneath all this blocks of draconium is just pure blocks of redstone all the way down to the core. If we shift right click this, it's going to create this giant sphere and uh, you'll notice that it can store up to 2.14 trillion RF. So quite a massive amount. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to have to look at is, now that we've got this, how do we get power into it? And the answer is, you are going to need... Um, yeah, I'm going to find them one of these days. Uh, right here. These energy pylons. And um, then what you can do is you can take a block of glass. Uh, we'll set these up... Um, bring it out it really doesn't matter as long as it's within I think like 10 blocks of the uh, thing if we set it um, a piece of glass there like on top of it um, you'll notice that it's blue which means it's going to pull from uh, or the the little circles are moving in towards the center point which means it is pulling energy from um, this energy core and if we shift right click, they're going to start radiating out, which means that it is sending energy to the core. And you can set these up, you know, anywhere around this thing. Um, if you put them on bottom, you can have them coming out the bottom. And if we set uh, this one over here, we can have it going from the top. It really doesn't matter um, however you want to lay it out. And since this is pushing to the multi-block, uh, what we can do here, let's grab ourselves a creative generator. And that one will work. Uh, we can plug that in. And you'll notice that this is starting to build up power. And if we say we put a, a capacitor bank... fiber one sounds great um, on one of these that are receiving the energy we put that on there and you'll notice that it is now starting to fill up at a right at the maximum rate um, because these are pretty much unlimited transfer for the most part um, and you could see little graphics showing that energy is moving here energy is moving out however draconic evolution does add its own energy infrastructure um, that it brings to the pack. Um, let me see. Actually, it's about wrapping up point. So next episode when we come back, it'll be the final episode for Draconic Evolution. And we will cover um, the Generator, which is a very powerful 
energy production um, multi-block that pretty much beats out even big reactors and stuff um, as far as just the immense amounts of power that it can create. However, it is extremely expensive to craft and it is also extremely dangerous because if you set it up wrong, it can and will explode and create just a massive um, hole in the ground, almost like just a nuclear bomb went off uh, where your base was. So you have to be really, really cautious when you set those up. Um, but we will get into that next episode as well as briefly cover the power infrastructure um, for Draconic Evolution, how to move power. And it honestly has one of the best um, power systems that there is, um, especially for moving mass amounts of power and wirelessly connecting to multiple machines and everything. <coughs> so anyway... Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope that it was helpful for you. If you did, as always, please comment, like, subscribe. It's very, very much appreciated. And until next episode, do take care, and I hope to see you guys then.